I am so glad y'all could join me today. I'm going to be sharing five new DIYs and they are part of a playlist called Spring Has Sprung. It's hosted by Crafty Co, Mama Can Make It, The Rusted Willow, Six Kids and a Glue Gun, and Creative DIY with Mom Dos. The link to their channels will be in the description box below as well as a link to the playlist. I hope y'all enjoyed today's video. My name is Lisa and this is Our Gray House. All right, let's jump right into the DIYs. I used folk art chalk paint in the color Milk Jug to give two good coats to this wood round sign that I got from Dollar Tree. I saw a little sign at Hobby Lobby that had the saying, pray more, worry less. And I took a pic of it so I could basically copy the lettering style because I thought it looked pretty. And so I sketched it out in pencil and then I went over it with a purple paint pen. Well, when I went to erase the pencil lines, it smeared the paint just a tad. I tried to fix it, but I can still kind of see where it messed up. And so I just go back over it with my paint pen to try and clean it up. So it had this kind of nostalgic feel to me. So I used lace ribbon to make a bow. I had some greenery on hand, so I added that. And I dug through my vintage Tupperware container that holds my button collection and finally just decided on a purple button. And then I added the button to the middle of the bow and I also added a jute twine hanger to the back. And this is how it turned out. I added some stitching and dots around the piece. This totally reminds me of when I would craft in the 80s and 90s, but I think it looks sweet. Going in with the same paint for DIY number two, I left the house on the sign, which I got from Dollar Tree by the way, because I thought it would be easier. I ended up giving this two good coats of the folk art chalk paint in the color Milk Jug. I sketched home sweet home in pencil on the bottom of the house and then went over it with a fine black tipped, uh, a black fine tipped paint pen. Come on, gosh, why am I messing that up? Anyway, I did go over the curse of home sign again with a thicker black paint pen. So what you see me doing here is trying to embellish the sign. At first, I thought I was going to try and put the twine behind the house while it was still attached to the sign. That wasn't working. And I saw that the sign was attached with little, these little mini screws. So I took those off, took the house off, I wrapped twine around the house, and I added a simple shoestring bow. And then I took some greeny that I think I got from Walmart, but Hobby Lobby also has it in the his and her section. And that area goes on sale 50% off every other week. Anyway, I got two little sprigs of it at the top of the house and I added a white button to the center of the greenery. And then I glued the house back on. And this is how it turned out. I think it looks so cute and it's a nice transition piece for spring. And I was at Hobby Lobby and I saw this and I don't know what you'd call it because it's not really a sign. It's kind of like a plant holder or flower holder. I don't know. But I liked how it looked and I wanted to try and recreate it. So I took an 8x10 canvas frame from Dollar Tree and remove the canvas. Now normally I would remove the staples too, but for this project I just went ahead and left them on. And I'm just rummaging around in my miscellaneous scrap wood bin to see if I could find a paint stick that would be the right size. I did have to cut the paint stick down a bit and then I used some wood glue and glued it to the frame. and then stained the frame using Waverly Wax in the color Antique. And I just brushed some off and used a wet cloth to wipe off the excess. And yes, I am wearing gloves. I'm trying to save this manicure for as long as I can. <laughs> the little jars that I'm using are actually from a vintage spice rack. They were spice jars and I just removed the label to use them for this project and I'm gonna attach them using faux leather. Now I couldn't find my faux black leather and of course the Innsmouth peach is attached differently but I was just trying to make it work. So I decided to tack down one side of the leather that was acting as my holder and then wrap the leather around the neck of the jar and then tried to attach it on the other side. I was using hot glue and thumbtacks and no, it was not really that easy to do. But if I were to redo this, next time I'd cut a slit in the back to feed the leather through, much like the inspo piece. It was starting to look like the inspo piece though, and I was happy with how it was turning out. And because they were so close together, gluing down that faux leather and pushing in the thumbtacks was hard to do, but in the bit, but in the end, it worked fine. Um, I trimmed down the thumbtacks that poked through the back with some scrap faux leather to cover up any of those pointy pieces. 
And I did add some beads to the frame. I just used the ones that are little stickers and are kind of attached together. And this is how it turned out. Y'all, this is not perfect, but I really like how it turned out. And I try not to be super critical of the things that I make, but, cause I could point out where I messed up or it didn't work out right, but it looks totally cute in person. And you can obviously change out what is inside the glass jars to fit the season or the holiday. I love it. Now I need your help with DIY number four. I was just staining this wooden box with Waverly Wax in the color antique. Simple and easy peasy. I'm just making a super simple arrangement and the picks I'm using for this are from Hobby Lobby in the his and her section. Of course, I got them for sale 50% off because y'all know how I feel about that. And to the center of the box, I'm adding a white candle that I got from Dollar Tree. And then I'm arranging the greenery on each side of the candle. And as you notice, I'm not even using any of that green foam or star foam or anything like that. Just kind of packing in the greenery and trying to make sure it's balanced on both sides. So that's it. Now, here's where I need your help. I need you to tell me what I need to put on the box. As in, I was thinking of adding wording or something. I thought about cutting out a decal that said family or maybe gather, but I think gather sounds kind of like too fall-ish, you know? So tell me in the comments below what word or phrase I should add to this box. I mean, I think it looks cute like it is, but maybe a little bit extra embellishment. This is a Kirkland's inspired project. And although my end result looks a little different, it didn't cost me $54.99 either. I started off with four of these frames from the Dollar Tree. I removed the label holder at the bottom, but saved those to use for another project. I also removed the stickers and the stand in the back, but then I decided it needed to be bigger. So I added two more frames. Using a combination of wood glue and hot glue, I glued two frames together in sets, and then I glued all the sets together. And this felt a little flimsy to me, so I added some more popsicle sticks to the back for added stability. I started to add a wreath to this piece, but it just didn't look right. I wanted there to be a window in the center of the wreath, not the frame. So I happened to have three more frames in my stash and I added those and more popsicle sticks for stability. This sweet little wreath is from the Target Dollar Spot. I've had this in my stash for quite a while, but originally it was $3. It came with a smaller buffalo check ribbon and I started to use that, but wanted something more substantial. so. Um, and now I'm just positioning where I want it to go and then hot gluing the ends down so that it hangs correctly. And then I was looking at it and something just didn't feel quite right about it. So I went back in with some folk art paint in the color Adirondack and painted the entire frame white. And then I just didn't want it to be a plain white. So I went in with some Waverly Wax in the color antique and distressed it just a bit. There are a couple parts that I was a bit heavy handed with that. So that's easily fixed by dry brushing on some more of the white paint. And I added the glass back into the frames and used E6000 in the corners to hold those. I pushed them down, you know, I pushed down that little metal tab um, to help hold it in as well. And this is how it turned out and it's my favorite piece. I just really, really love it. It looks like a mini vintage window frame and I can add different florals to the wreath to customize it for the seasons and the holidays. I mean, I just think it turned out so good. Thank y'all so much for joining me today. I really do appreciate all the support and love you show my channel. And I have a crafting group on Facebook. It's called Crafty DIYs on a Budget. It's gonna be linked in the description box below. And if you wanna follow me on Instagram or here on YouTube, it's Our Gray House, but just don't follow me in real life though, because that's creepy. Bye.